Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, KHTS. Today, we are talking about personal power. And before we went on the break, we were talking about um, this idea of perspective glasses and a little bit about thinking in a different way like someone else would be thinking. <laughs> yeah, sh- so. <laughs> shifting your perspective so that you're able to see multiple possibilities rather than the couple possibilities that you have trained yourself to see. But before we before we actually left on the break, you were talking about how with your clients, it's your job to get them to see how you're seeing something. So it's not clouded but, by their... Yeah, but, their but my job is to open up three or four different possibilities, not just the one way that I can see mm-hmm. it. So what I've gotten really good at is being creative enough to create multiple perspectives. That's really that's really my personal power and my ability to help others. They give me a scenario, and then they and then through the way that they're sharing their scenario, it tells me they can only see it five different ways or eight different ways. And then my job is to open up another five or another seven so that they have other options rather than the ones that they think that that's all there is. Yeah, and what I was excited about before we went on the break was – hearing you say that I was thinking what if I created a list of three people that I really either look up to or like the way that they think or how they perceive things um, whatever that is that makes them successful whatever I like about them um, add them to a list maybe it's my top three people and every time I feel myself getting frustrated mad angry you know wanting to react in a negative way think about how those people would perceive it and I kind of have my own version of that already, but I don't consciously stop, think about those three people mentally. So maybe what that looks like is writing on a sticky note, those three people's names, and then just having them everywhere. And I know what that means. Right. So They're like little code code for you to say, you know. Okay, stop, take a breath. Yeah. And how how would so-and-so handle it? Or how would so-and-so see it? Or how would they, you know, perceive it? Yeah, because... What I like to think about is when I meet people, I like certain qualities about them that I want to mirror. There's not one person that I want to be exactly like, but how cool if I could pull every every little this and that that I like from people and make a a fake person, make a fake person to look up to that has all of those qualities. And by a fake person, what I really mean is me, like turn so that I can turn into that person and and pull the things that I like. But I have to remember that and that's the part where i fail over and over is actually remembering because i'm not setting myself up to win with those sticky notes or reminders on my phone or whatever's easiest for you yeah i like that um the next and then the next uh bonus uh version of that would be um make phone calls to those people and say hey is it okay if i pick your brain real quick or hey i got the scenario i want to run it by you what find out what your thoughts are or how do you see this or how would you handle this but but the trick is to find other people that inspire you that you look up to that you admire um that you you like certain things about them or there's certain ways that they show up in the world or the way that they handle their life or handle circumstances that you would turn to and try to figure out how they see it like that you know how to how do you get to the point where you're able to see it like that or deal with it in that way? And so let's go back over the the, the different notes I wrote down when it comes to uh, personal power. So number one is all about perspective shifting. We spent a good half hour talking about that. The other thing is that you have to you have to be highly open minded, not semi minded, open minded, yeah, <laughs> not kind of open minded or sort of open minded. You have to be highly open minded. You have to really open up your mind to all possibilities once you start shutting out possibilities and you have a fixed perception of no it can only fall in this frame of 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 you know this framework i need you to be open to all possibilities so your job is to keep opening it like that you open your mind and expand it more to see from all different perspectives different angles that's where personal power is is really trying to figure out how can i see it a different way how can i see it in a way that's more effective to me that it that it inspires me and so here's a here's a here's a great scenario you and i are sitting uh, having lunch and we're at the diner and we both va- valeted our car and as we're sitting there the valet comes out and he throws both of our keys down he throws you yours and throws you mine or he mixes them up he just don't now goes i gotta go you gotta get your own cars and he takes off now you are flabbergasted like what is going on? 
how rude of this guy. And you make up three or four different uh, stories in your mind about that experience that you just had by Tom the valet guy who just walked by and threw our keys. And and you, I can see that you're really upset, you're really annoyed, um, and you feel disrespected, and you're already ready to call the manager to complain. And the manager comes over, and you're giving him a hard time or her a hard time because you feel like he shouldn't have done that. He that wasn't the right thing to do. He what? He's not. Uh, that's not service. You know, treating you disrespectful, and you went on a whole tangent. And then when you're done, our food comes, and I'm eating my meal, and I have I'm enjoying it, and you're like, I don't even want to eat no more. And then you look over at me, and you go, Aren't you mad? Aren't you? Doesn't that make you upset? And I'm like, No. Maybe the guy just got a call that his wife is in the hospital or one of his kids got hurt. or like In other words, I can find multiple ways to interpret that event rather than the three or four ways that you've conditioned yourself to see it. You only have four different possibilities or eight different possibilities and you keep choosing the ones that are disempowering you. Rather than finding another one that frees you up to first see it in a different way that doesn't make you get all angry and all upset or all annoyed or or taking it personal. And I think that's really what it boils down to when it comes to personal power is how many different ways can you look at it? And are you open to all possibilities, not just the five or ten that you can see at that moment? Yeah, you know what? I'm... I identify with that story a lot because I'm the kind of person that, even though in that situation I probably wouldn't apply but in certain scenarios where I will let whatever just happened ruin the rest of my day or ruin the rest of my meal or however long it takes for me to just get over yeah, it but that same valet scenario is the same scenario in whatever it is you're talking about right so <laughs> that's why I'm laughing because for me I can see all the times where I've been so stubborn and and not wanted to let certain things go. So give me an example. Like, How can you tie that into a personal example so the rest of us can go, okay, I can, I can see that or I can identify with that or I do that too? Um, it, a common scenario is I have a younger sister who steals all my stuff, my clothes, my shoes, my everything. Thing. Oh, isn't that cool? <laughs> isn't that cool? And no, wait a minute. <laughs> Andrew, isn't that cool that you got a baby sister because some people don't have baby sisters or some people... Their baby sisters were um, died of cancer or don't have they don't have that to have somebody come steal their stuff. But notice how you're choosing to, to interpret it. Right. right? Yeah. And I have friends that are like, oh, I want a sister so bad. And I'm like, no, you don't. And they're like, yes, I do. And I'm like, all right. You can have mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you get your sister and yeah. then come talk to me. Yeah. But uh, I I'm at the point now because after so many years where it doesn't bother me as much as it did but I look at myself when I was 15 I would stay home from the movies if mm -hmm. we were all going because mm -hmm. she was wearing my t-shirt I would you know punish myself and and have all kinds of craziness going on in my head where I'm you know just I'm done with you yeah, I can't believe like, yeah you know and I'm sitting there in my room and everyone's like at dinner and I'm just <laughs> by myself you know you can't see on the radio but I'm mad <laughs> and so I, I can't believe all those times where I punished myself because, because you, I couldn't see. You chose that perception that was disempowering rather than the grateful perception or the perception that was more empowering that, that, gave, you a, that gave you a way to, to be free rather than getting tagged and, and being defensive and right, angry, right. annoyed. And, and so now I can see all of the – and I know – people three times my age who are still that way and it breaks my heart because i having an inner peace where you're not pissed off all the time or angry about things that really in you know hindsight don't matter it's it's so it makes me so happy to feel that peace like yeah. i like i said so um i i just wanted to share that piece of information just in case that's something that you're going through through too because it was hard it's still hard i'm still doing it yeah. i still get mad at my sister it's still triggers it's still it's still stuff that you need to shed off you have to outgrow it you have to evolve past it you know you got to figure out how to reinvent yourself there's a greater version of jasmine there's a jasmine 9.0 that's waiting for you to get to that place and it's a journey it's a process and as your dad i get to be patient and when you have those little moments or spats or temper tantrums or whatever you do i get to go hey she's 
it's okay for her to do that. It's, she's in her journey. I'd, I'd much rather you be in that journey um, and a conscious journey of having those because I know now from the perspective that you're looking at it, you're looking at it from a place to learn. You're not now not doing it just unconsciously like automatic pilot where you're actually not learning from it. You're now having it, having those moments. And then the cool thing about it is that we get to talk about it on the radio and you get, you know, hundreds, hopefully a couple thousand listeners that can identify with you or maybe send you a message saying, hey, I do that too or whatever. So this is this is part of the growth is one outing ourselves and kind of owning up to it and having other people be a witness of it. And you're as you're sharing it, you're hearing yourself say that. One of the most powerful exercises that I do in the teen training is a process where I mock the death of family members for these kids. And one of the most amazing experiences is I'll have your little brother or little sister, and I'll have a couple of kids that represent them standing, I'm holding their hand, and I'll say, this is your little brother or your sister. And if the day comes ever that he or she is gone, or you have an hour to get to the hospital, say your last goodbyes, you're going to be in the car crying and going through your mind of all those moments that you were mean to him, saying, get out of my room, stop touching my things. And all that he or she wants to do is to try to be close to you because when you're 15 or 16 years old, all you care about is who? Me. You're so focused on me that you don't look at your little brother or your little sister and they look up at you and they idolize you. And, and so maybe there's a possibility that you're still, that there's still a version of that 15-year-old girl that's stuck in you that's annoyed by your little sister. And so hopefully you can outgrow that one day and realize that you never know from day to day if she's going to be there. Because when she's gone, I promise you, you're going to be in your room crying and I'm going to walk in and go, what's, what, what's up? And you're going to go, I wish I had my sister back stealing my stuff, taking my things. Um, and so those are those moments that we have those aha moments and realize that. And I'm, hope, and I'm hoping you have that moment now that you realize it now, not when it's too late. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for me doing those, because uh, I've done that, that exercise a exercise hundred times. Luckily, I've ha done the exercise because what you do is you, you pick one of the students to go around. I've had the exercise where I actually have my little sister. Or I actually have my older brother to do that with and it's a very emotional process especially for gosh I don't even know when I started doing that 13 14 15 you know I probably did a couple of years ago so it's um it's cool to to go through that experience because when Can we're talking because <laughs> when we're talking about you know all the the baggage and all that stuff that you know we're talking about with seeing perspective you know you never really realize that all that even the bad stuff like that you would rather have that than nothing you know absolutely so. absolutely and so that's perspective shifting and it's unfortunate that some some of us have that awakening after people are gone after they die you know we're sitting there on our grave on their grave site saying i'm so sorry please forgive me you know if i had you back i i would let you those wouldn't matter to me if i had you back i would one more time bite my tongue and uh, not choose to see it as uh, you're, you know, that's rude or disrespectful. I would choose to be grateful that I have a little sister that can take my things, that I can share them with. And it's all, it's all part of life. It's all part about evolving and growing and, and becoming uh, wise rather than smart. You know, that's the, 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 the wisdom that's within us, the, the emotional maturity that we go through in that process. So let's get back to personal power. So personal power is all about perspective shifting. That's number one. Two, you have to be highly open-minded. Uh, th three, you have to be open to all possibilities, not just some. So your jer lifelong journey is how do I keep growing to where I stretch the, possibil the possibility limit to become that one day where I wake up and I see a world of unlimited possibilities. That's that's the goal for me for me as well. And then um, then let's talk about not being reactive. Being reactive um, kills your personal power. And again, this is this is and, it, and your reactiveness comes from your perspectives. You see something that you've decided you've decided or chosen to see it as that shouldn't be happening, and therefore it presses a button. You get angry and then you react or something that happens and you say, why is this happening? You're in a psychological resistance to it happening, especially now. It presses your button. You get annoyed and then you react. So being reactive in your life kills your personal power. 
You have to learn how to allow things to unfold the way it is. You decide that, hey, whatever's happening right now in front of me, even though I don't like it or it's not beneficial to me or there's no value, is supposed to be happening and not be in psychological resistance to whatever's happening or the way the, the world unfolds for it to just let it be. Now, how do I know without a shadow of a doubt that what's happening in your life, even if it's a tragedy, is supposed to be happening? Because it's happening. Because it, there, there's, a, there's a four-year-old Jasmine, dad, because it's happening. Exactly. If it wasn't supposed to happen, it wouldn't have happened. And the only way that you know something is supposed to happen is because it's happening in real time right now. So your job is to not resist it and not want it to be there or not or not go on a tangent of why is this here and calling up your friends going this i'm annoyed because this is, and you start gossiping about it and you go into the psychological resistance of not having whatever is unfolding happen yeah and that psychological resistance that you're talking about uh for me what it looks like is one it's a feeling it's just like this really tight feeling inside that's just like God, I hope this doesn't happen, you know, and, and you're mad. But I notice that what I do, let's say the, the example of my sister, if I can't find a pair of shoes, I'm like, I bet you they're in her room <laughs> and I'm going in her room and I'm stomping in there, looking everywhere, tearing everything up and I can't find them. And then two days later, I find them in my car. Mm. But for two days, I was like, where are those shoes? You know, Again, and punishing yourself, right? Yes. And I'm like sitting there with all this, you know, you know, torturing myself, you know, inside and I hope that paints a good picture because I know that every single person has felt that. Now, honey, I hate to say this to you, but I'm going to say it because I think you need to hear this. When you get in reactive mode like that and you start you start paying the price, all that anger and animosity and frustration, that's all negative energy in your, in your body. And um, that adds up to cancer. That adds up to uh, stresses, illness. St stress is the number one killer. All that is a... a a kind of a stress that's transparent you can't see it it's just there and it's happening and it starts to taint your body and it starts to shut you know different things down in you and you're really sabotaging yourself you're not really setting yourself up to win so i hope that today there was a new awareness a new wake-up call to be able to choose a more power powerful perspective i hope that you know, from now on, you uh, start to um, allow your sister, you know, I mean, you know, there gets to be healthy boundaries, but do it in a more powerful way, you know, do it in a more loving, more accepting way rather than the that ego that <laughs> yeah. wants to come out and go, but dad, because there's a little girl in you that wants it right now, go, but dad, it's not fair. Yeah, you're right. It's not fair. But but I'd rather you learn how to shift your perspective and figure out how to reinvent yourself to sit her down and let her know how important it is for her to honor your things. And I think you can create that with a higher version of yourself to where she goes, you know what, you know what, sis, I, I, I get it. And you're right. And, and I'll work on it. Will you be patient with me? And I see you guys creating that. It hasn't happened yet, but there's always time and there's opportunity for you guys to both evolve to that level. We had to take a quick break. Stay tuned for more of My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, KHTS. Today we are talking about personal power. So I want you to go ahead and finish your list up because we only have a couple minutes. Yeah, so basically I left off with uh, not being reactive. Um, and then I wanted to go over some of the benefits. Some of the benefits of learning how to shift your perceptions, be open to all possibilities, um, being open-minded, not being reactive. Uh, some of the benefits is that you don't take things personal as much and i'll throw the as much because ultimately the end goal is to where you don't take things personal period or ever but we're human and so it's a journey it's like weight loss you you got to go through every stage you got to go day by hour by hour day by day week by week month by month and so being conscious and and working and tweaking that development and that growth it takes years if if not a whole lifelong process so um, some of the benefits at a certain point is that you you don't take things personal as much because when people show up in a certain way, you're able to shift your perspective to be able to choose the empowering perspective like, hey, you have the right to say that. Or it's okay that you don't agree with me. Or if that's how you see it, I honor that. Right? Those are the, the more empowering perceptions. But most of us don't do that. What we do is when we hear people share, we go, I agree, I don't agree. Or, and especially if we don't agree, then we 
put people in a box and then we don't like we just we classify him as you know he's they're not part of my tribe or whatever or, or even worse so you don't take things personal another benefit of of doing all that kind of work and and shifting your perception is that you don't get offended as often uh you don't get mad or angry or annoyed or get your feelings hurt it's it's really about your emotions and it's pers- shifting your perspective really kind of pr- protects your emotions and it keeps you from seeing that things are happening to you and be, that you're being the victim rather than you're just being an observer of watching somebody that's going on a tirade or or someone that's angry what would it be like if as a parent you're able to see some of the choices that either your kids are doing or your spouse is doing and not be affected by it. You know, your joy and your peace and your happiness has nothing to do with their choices. And you're just able to say, okay, that's your choice and that's what you choose and I honor that and it's got nothing to do with me. You know, for me, are you done with your list? I, I have. Am. Okay. I am. <laughs> for me, the biggest, biggest, hands down the biggest benefit, and I've already said this in the hour, but is having that interpersonal peace like once you experience it once you like have your first experience of just you know getting off of it and not not being bothered by it anymore it's like you know that it exists i'll speak in the eye i know that it exists and every single time something happens i want to get there i want to figure out okay i want to keep going until i get there during every scenario so if you haven't experienced it it's great you should try it (laughs) and like like when my clients for the first time you know after working with them for a little while when they actually have that kind of breakthrough i love getting their text they're like oh my god i'm so excited i can't wait to my next session for me to share and usually when they're sharing it's uh, you know, they're they're really excited because they're telling me about the scenario, and then they're saying, and they'll say it like this: the old version of me, the Alex 3.0, would have totally went, and I didn't this time. And this is the greatest, uh, uh, this is the greatest compliment. They'll say, Alex, I heard your little voice right here on my shoulder telling me, hey, see it like this, don't see it like that, and then I then I was able to see it. And so to see their face light up, to me, that's personal power. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us today on My Conscious Dad. We're here every Friday from 12 to 1, right here on your hometown station, KHTS.